Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Blunting Occam's Razor. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what is the principle of parsimony. Now, the principle of parsimony, commonly referred to as Occam's Razor, is simply the claim that the simpler theory is better than the more complicated one. While it's often associated with scholastic philosopher William of Ockham, versions of this principle can be found in the works of Aristotle, Aquinas, Kant, Newton, and Einstein. It continues to serve a key function in science, the philosophy of science, and metaphysics beyond its everyday use in explaining things that happen to us. A key feature of this principle is that it is balanced with the explanatory theory of or explanatory power of a theory, rather. Sometimes this is framed as simplicity is preferable certibus paribus, all else equal. In other words, if two theories explain something equally well, but one is simpler, we should prefer the simpler explanation. In other definitions, simplicity is seen as another axis with explanatory power, where the goal of a theory should be to provide the most explanation for the simplest theory, and there's some degree of trade-off between simplicity and explanation. This raises a number of questions. How should we define simplicity? Is it the number of things that your theory posits that makes it simple? The number of types of things your theory posits? The complexity of those things? The number of axioms you must assume? The complexity of those axioms? And how do these different definitions of simplicity compare? Is a theory that posits Google plexes of discrete physical objects simpler than one that posits only billions of physical objects, but posits billions of mental objects as well? Can we avoid the prohibitions of mainly different of many different axiomatic assumptions by simply conjoining them all into one claim. If it's a theory is simpler if it only has one axiom as opposed to ten, can I just say that my one axiom was the ten I was thinking of doing all conjoined together, one and two and three and four and five, etc.? Is the degree of simplicity dependent on the language that's used? Is something more complicated in English but simpler in a different language, and therefore it's not really that objective that we're looking for simplicity? Once a clear definition of simplicity is discovered, some justification for the principle itself must be derived. While it seems very intuitive that simpler theories are much are more justified because they do not need to assume as much, this is actually very challenging to prove. Further, it seems to give rise, rise to many concerns concerning conclusions regarding very simple explanatory theories. Basically, a priori justifications often rely on theological claims, or simply a base assertion of the intrinsic virtue of simplicity, which is a circular argument, unable to convince anyone that's not already sold on simplicity. Empirical justifications of the principle face the challenge that scientific theories have gotten much more complicated over time, not simpler. So if we think our current theories are better than those that came before them, it seems that complicated theories are more likely to be true than simple ones. And so both empirically and intrinsically there doesn't seem to be a strong justification for any kind of connection between simplicity and truth. If Occam's razor can be sufficiently justified and defined, it holds great promise. It could help us address issues of the problem of underdetermination. When we are cannot decide between different possible explanations of existing evidence, we could use Occam's razor to decide between them. In Bayesian epistemology, it could be used to address objections that there are no ways to distinguish between theories that predict new evidence and those that accommodate it, as theories that predict are often simpler than those that accommodate, etc. However, before we can cash in on these promises, there's a steep hill to climb. As a skeptic, I'm doubtful that the principle of parsimony will stand up to critical scrutiny, but I encourage you to watch the rest of this series to make up your own mind. We've raised a lot of questions in this video about how we could define simplicity and how we could justify it. In the rest of the videos in this series, we're going to try to look at some answers that have been offered to those questions, but also objections to those answers. And finally, a lot of paradoxes that arise regardless of the answers that we pick. Before we dig into the formal definitions and justifications, though, how would you define simplicity? Based on your definition, do you accept the principle of parsimony? If so, how do you justify it? How do you justify some connection between the simplicity of something and the truth of it? And if you don't accept it, why not? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Watch this video and more here at Cardeides.org. Subscribe, hit the notification bell if you like this video and you want to see more. You want to make sure you catch the rest of this big long series on simplicity that we're doing. And stay skeptical, everybody.